right. You're going live now. You are live now, Councillor Mosquito. Thank you so very much, Kay. And good evening, everyone, to all of you who are listening that I can't see. It's so nice not to have to respond to anyone-ish. Um, nonetheless, I want to welcome to our meeting um, Peter Edwards, who's the Principal Clean Air Zone Officer, who's going to provide the latest information on the Clean Air Zone. We also have, I'll be reading a notification from the police, and we have Gemma Callow. And Gemma, what are you going to be talking about? I'm also supporting on the Clean Air Zone messaging tonight. By the Clean Air Zone, okay, fair enough. And can I, sorry Councillor Mosquito, it's Kay yes. again. Can I just butt in, Marion's managed to join us now from Public Health, so if you ah. want to take the agenda in the right order, we'll be okay. Okay, well, fair enough then. Well, first of all, welcome everyone, and welcome, Marion, you got in. Um, I would not wish what happened to me on you um, on full council day, where I couldn't get into my computer at all, I couldn't hear anything, so we didn't start full council on full council day with all 100 and odd councillors until 20 past or 10 past two. No, yeah, 20 past two. It was horrible, nonetheless. Welcome. The second thing I have to do is to notify um, residents participating and listening to the online meeting that a recording of the meeting will be available for future reference. So the next thing on the agenda, that is on the agenda every day, every moment, every hour, is a COVID update. And Marion's going to present that to us. Marion, over to you. Yes, and I'm still trying to get open the very latest information um, because my computer is whirring around and around and around. So I've, ah, it's finally open. So I now can have the data at my fingertips. So our case rate over the last seven days in Birmingham is 193 um, per 100,000. Um, so this has gone up slightly over the last week to the tune of um, just about 2%. Before that, we'd seen it coming down. Um, so we've, in terms of our cumulative case rate, we've now got um, per 100,000 population is 3,884 um, people. Um, and unfortunately, in the last seven, seven days, we've had 74 people who've died of COVID. Um, our um, hospital admissions um, have been inc increasing um, recently. In terms of the number of situations that we have across the city, um, there are currently 178, of which of though most of those are in educational settings, so um, within, within, within our schools. Um, the, the number of care homes who've got um, situations are 16, and there's five workplaces. Um, so, so not altogether great news at the moment. Uh, in terms of the testing, we've got 10, 10 local testing sites that are operational and two mobile testing sites that are op operational. And in the last seven days, there's 22,000 PCR tests that have been undertaken and 5,600 lateral flow tests. Um, the positivity for um, each of those, for the PCR test is 10.1% and the lateral flow is 0.2% at the moment. So in terms of how our contact tracing is going, um, the 77% of our cases are now being completed um, and so that has increased slightly. Case follow up letters are being now being sent and we also have over 500 um, COVID champions that have have joined the team, which is absolutely fantastic. Um, and that um, that is about all I have to say on the, the COVID side of things. But I'm happy to take any questions and if I can't answer them, I will ensure that somebody um, comes back to you with the information. Thank you very much, Marion. Thank you. Um, Marion, somebody told, somebody asked me if we we're going into tier two tomorrow. 
and I should ask at the meeting, are we going into tier two tomorrow? No. Um, I don't think that that has been agreed. No, I, I think I would have been informed about that. And there's <laughs> nothing in my inbox to suggest that, um, that we're going into tier two tomorrow. No. <laughs> Thank you very much. But I did ask at least some, if they're listening, they can hear, because I, I didn't think we were going to, but I said I would help. I would ask the um, director of public health at the ward meeting. Thank you so very much. Are there any questions from anyone? Yes. For? We haven't got any questions in the Q&A box now. Oh, OK, then. Um, so the next thing on the uh, next item is the police update. Is the police update? Thank you. I'll. I'll... Sorry. OK. So I think that I think that was I think that was Marion. Uh, I think she was oh. just saying she was leaving, oh, <laughs> leaving the meeting. I should say thank you to her. Thank you very much, Marion. And I know she's not hearing me now, but I, I'll just express that. But the next thing on the agenda is the police update. Yes. Uh, yes, it is. Yes. OK, then, because I haven't got my agenda on the screen because oh, right. I can't see it on this screen. So I shall very quickly read it. Over the last six months, the Bordesley Green Neighbourhood team have been carrying out proactive op operation in conjunction with other departments to tackle drug dealing in the area. These operations have resulted in many arrests and large amount of Class A drugs being taken off the streets. We also continue this enforcement by ex executing numerous warrants and at addresses across the ward that are connected with drug dealing. Our community connect and build work has, of course, been interrupted by lockdown measures around COVID-19. However, when out of lockdown, we will be continuing our work with local primary and secondary schools to support the education of our youngsters to divert them, divert them from crime. We are also looking to reinvigorate our community street watch initiative. So we are actively looking for local residents from all over the Borsley Green area to get in touch and patrol with us. With regards to making our roads safer, my officers have been carrying out parking enforcements over the ward area. We also began work working with local authorities, civil enforcement officers to increase this work. In the future, we are also looking to continue our speed watch initiatives. This is where members of the local community can operate a speed camera gun to work with us to make our streets safer. A big concern for our area was the increase we've seen in domestic abuse during lockdown. My team are tackling this by working with other specialist departments and other partner agencies such as Women's Aid to reduce domestic abuse. We also intend to raise awareness of domestic abuse by carrying out regular community events and we are working with Heartlands Hospital to push the No Excuse for Abuse campaign. No excuse for abuse. And Kay, who was this, who was this, who did sent, sent in this report? Because I'm, again, I haven't got my um, agenda on the the screen, which I will in a bit though. Uh, Councillor Mosquet, so that was from Sergeant Mark Paxton, who's the sergeant for the Bordesley part of your ward. Wonderful. Well, thank, thank you very much, um, Sergeant Paxton, for that report. It's very comprehensive in the circumstances. I think the next thing on the agenda is the, co is the um, clean air zone. It is, yes, and we've got um, Gemma and Peter here, and I think they've got a slide presentation as well to uh, to show. Thank you very much, Kay. So if Gemma and Peter can begin their presentation, I'd be grateful. Thank you very much. Thank you. So um, good evening. My name is Gemma Callow. I am the Communications um, Engagement Manager for the Clean Air Zone in Birmingham. So tonight we'll just give you a brief overview of where we are up to with the Clean Air Zone. Um, so I think, Pete, you have control of the slide deck now. So Pete, can you turn the slides? No, you, you have got control it's it's with you at the moment i can't i can't turn them there we go sorry apologies for that okay so i'm um, just a quick run through as to why we're doing this so the clean air zone is being introduced to tackle air quality which has been declared as a national emergency across the country 
we are one of many clean air zones that's going to be introduced. So air pollution is linked to 900 deaths in Birmingham every year. It's also connected to conditions such as heart disease, diabetes, asthma. It worsens these conditions. Um, people in uh, deprived areas and who are vulnerable are more adversely affected by this. So that's the youngsters and the elderly. Bus and taxi drivers are exposed to three times more air pollution than others just through sitting in traffic every day. So um, in Birmingham, about 50% of journeys undertaken through the city are undertaken by car every day. And of the journeys that are taken, um, a quarter of a million are less than a mile. So Birmingham is introducing a category D clean air zone. There's different clean air zones being introduced across the UK. We're choosing category D and that means that every vehicle will be charged if it does not meet the emission standards. So we're talking about coaches, taxis, trucks, buses, vans and private cars. Others such as Bath, which is a category C zone launching in March and going first, they won't be charging private vehicles, but we've opted to go for category D. So for Birmingham, what it means is that the clean air zone is everywhere within the A4540 middleway, but not the middleway itself. So if you drive a non-compliant vehicle, and we have to stress it's a non-compliant vehicle, this is not a congestion charge, it's not every vehicle. So if your vehicle doesn't meet the set of mission standards, you will be charged £8 a day if you're in a car, a taxi or a van, or £50 a day if you're in an HGV coach or bus. Um, you need to be Euro 4 standard or better in a petrol vehicle to not be charged. That's roughly vehicles from 2005 onwards. And for diesel, it needs to be Euro 6 standard or better, which is roughly most vehicles from September 2015 onwards. A day, just to clarify, is the term midnight to midnight, not 24 hours from when you enter. You can come in and out of the zone within that midnight to midnight period as many times as you want and you will only be charged the once. You have six days to pay in advance of your visit, the day of your visit or six days after. So you've got a 13 day payment window. Um, contrary to some myth, the council will also be charged and the council um, will use the money from clean air zone charges and reinvest them in transport related policies and projects. So some of the areas that the money is already going to be invested in is controlled parking zones, which will be introduced primarily around the middleway area to stop people parking on the outside and coming in. Um, there's funding for the hydrogen bus pilot. We're doing a lot of um, city centre pedestrianisation and then the enhanced programme of bus priority walking and cycling schemes. And this is where I will hand over to Pete, who will talk about the supports that's available to help people. Thank you, Gemma. Um, yeah, my name is Peter Edwards, Principal Clean Air Zone Officer um, with overall responsibility for delivering um, the exemptions side of the Clean Air Zone project. Um, so we know that this is a new and potentially challenging scheme that we are introducing. Uh, we know why we're doing it. Gemma's explained that quite succinctly, but we know that some people who are will be uh, adversely potentially uh, affected by this scheme. So during the consultation in 2018, the consultation was not, shall we do a clean air zone? It was, we have to do a clean air zone. We need to do a clean air zone. Who do you think we should support? Who needs the most support and how should we support them? So off the back of that consultation, which received something along the lines of 11,000 responses that the largest consultation um, Birmingham's ever done, um, we have come up with a, a set of firstly exemptions uh, and then secondly uh, financial incentives where we've sought funding from government. So the first thing I'll talk about is probably most relevant to, to the um, constituents on this call, the residents on this call, uh, are the exemptions. Uh, the key one being for those of you that live within the Middle Ring Road, so that would be more the Highgate section of this ward, that you can access a two year uh, exemption for your vehicle. So if you live within the clean air zone and drive a non-compliant vehicle, you can apply online to us and you will be granted subject to providing the right documents. So a copy of your V5, the logbook, and something that simply proves that you live um, in the zone, then you'll be granted a, a two year exemption. So this obviously gives you a little bit of breathing space um, 
to to work out what you're going to do are you going to replace your car or are you going to stop using that car and it's important again to stress like Gemma did that <clears throat> it's only non-compliant vehicles that will have to pay so what we really need people to do with six months to go now we're launching on the first of june is to go online go onto our website <clears throat> the slide at the end will have our website address and check your vehicle you might be pleasantly surprised um something like i think it's when when the survey was done when the work around the consultation was done in 2018 it's about 75 percent of vehicles that pass through the zone are compliant and would not be charged so not everyone will be charged so if you live outside the zone, but you work in the zone and earn less than £30,000 a year, then you might also be able to uh, access an exemption. We call that the clean air zone workers exemption. Again, we would just need to see proof of that and we have an on online application form. Um, if you run a business within the clean air zone, then you can uh, potentially access uh, an exemption for up to two of your vehicles. We refer calling them commercial vehicles. And if you attend um, three of the designated medical centres hospitals in the clean air zone, then you will be able to get an exemption for that. That won't be an, that will be done via um, a voucher system where you will go to either if you're at the Children's Hospital, Bathrow Medical Centre or Badger Medical Centre. Those three all operate emergency or out of hours services so have been selected. So you, if you go there in a non-compliant vehicle, you don't have to pay. You can get a voucher from reception and then you can credit that voucher online. Um, so if you want to move us on a slide, please, Gemma. So in addition to those exemptions, which are the core exemptions, the ones that you can apply for online, which we think will be the most people, people who work and live in the zone. There are also the exemptions on screen that you can see here. I won't go through all of them, um, but if your vehicle has a, a disabled tax class and you can access that tax class, if you're on the high level PIP um, uh, and other uh, DLA uh, benefits, uh, motorcycles don't have to pay showman's vehicles i doubt there's anyone on the call who's, a, who's a, who runs a circus uh, vehicles that have a historical vehicle uh, classification so over 40 years old don't have to pay specialist vehicles such as recovery vehicles and of course the emergency services will not have to pay and then you've got your community and school transport so that's your, your ring and ride uh, they will not have to pay and these are um permanent exemptions. The one on the previous slide were, were temporary exemptions. Do you want to move us on again, Gemma? So we've talked about the exemptions. The other thing that we have to help support the transition to, to the clean air zone, it was we applied to government um, and we got £35 million pounds worth of, of money. Um, the one most relevant to um, people probably on this call is is the is the top fund there the 10 million pounds for a scrappage scheme and uh, which will enable people who work in the clean air zone with non-compliant vehicles to, to scrap that vehicle take that vehicle off the road in exchange for that they will receive two thousand pounds and that's either towards uh, a compliant vehicle or they can get uh, what's known as a mobility credit and that would be two thousand pounds put on a swift card um, to use on public transport. The, the third option is that you keep hold of your vehicle and then we get a thousand pounds on a on a on a swift card. Um, so that's a scheme that will go live early next year. At the moment it's not available for application but you can um, express an interest on our website if you're interested in that. Uh, I won't talk too much about the the HDV fund on this call unless there are any uh, truck operators on this call, um, probably not the audience for that. And the other big pot of money we've got is for is for taxi drivers. Again, given the nature of who's on this call, we're probably more interested in residents and workers. So, unless there's any questions in the Q and A, I'll just move on to the next slide, please, Gemma. Um, Peter, could you talk about the taxi drivers? Because there, there there may be some people actually that are taxi drivers yeah. in the ward. Yes, absolutely. So um, the taxi drivers and oh, I, might, I might have to just get it up on the screen can access um, various different pots of uh, various different levels of cash. So if you are a private hire, let's talk about private hire drivers first, private hire driver. If you have a non-compliant 
vehicle and your Birmingham license, you have to be Birmingham licensed because we know a lot of Uber and other um, of the new private hire are often licensed outside of the city. And you want to just, you don't want an electric vehicle, you just want a compliant vehicle, then you can have a thousand pounds towards doing that. If you are going to get a hybrid or an electric vehicle, they're more expensive and they're obviously cleaner and we're trying to incentivize that, you can have £2,000 towards that vehicle. And then if you're in a hackney carriage, there is uh, also, if you're a hackney carriage driver, there is also some funding, I think, that goes towards the ongoing running costs of that. So rather than giving you the money for the hackney carriage, we will give credits on the charging network throughout the city. Um, and there's that all of these are available to apply for at the moment. So there is more information on the website. It's not my area of expertise, but is it is all available to apply for at the moment. So I can encourage people if there are any taxi drivers on the call to to, to seek that out. And if it's not clear to contact us, um, if you want to move us across, Gemma. Thank you. Um, so the so the clean air zone is the is the kind of the figurehead, the thing that everybody knows about in terms of what we're trying to do in Birmingham, uh, in terms of it improving uh, air quality. But but the clean the clean air zone actually sits alongside a raft of other measures um, within the Birmingham's transport plan. The four visions or the four aims of that transport plan are shown on screen, and that is to reallocate road space away from private motor vehicles to people walking, cycling, and get then using public transport. To transform the city centre to make it a, a nicer place to, to walk and cycle, um, and the air quality hopefully will be better as a result of our, our, our clean air zone. To prioritise active travel, um, and that's by introducing low traffic neighbourhoods, cycle lanes, um, and then manage demand uh, using parking. And we've already touched on um, controlled parking zones. Um, so those are the four visions of, of the, so it's just to kind of set the, the context um, that the clean air zone is part of a wider policy, which is then in an even wider policy around um, the climate emergency. If you want to move us along, Gemma. Yeah, so the clean air zone is seeking to to accelerate change. Um, so we we already know that National Express um, have have introduced. They've converted a lot of their um, a lot of their fleet to Euro six, which is the cleanest level of diesel. But it's not it's still diesel. So they're now in, they've now introduced fully electric buses, and using some of the funding from the clean air zone package. They will also be introducing uh, hydrogen buses soon. So the clean air zone is is being used as an enabler to to, to push people to, to change quicker. Another example would be recently that the city council has, <coughs> excuse me, converted or, or replaced. I think up to Gemma probably knows the figure. I think it's around 70 of our bin lorries have now been converted into the into the highest level of of, uh, of Euro six. So you can see here that there's a potential purchase of up to 50 electric, electric hackney carriages that the council is looking to do using the money that we've, we've detailed on the, on the previous um, slides. And this all fits in, as I say, to the, 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 the route to zero and the wider climate emergency. You want to move on, Gemma? I think that may be the last slide. Yes, yeah, so that's the last slide. So. As I said at the beginning of my, my slot, please, the website has had a revamp. Gemma's done some fantastic work on there. Um, there is a lot of case studies on there. There is a, a vehicle checker, so you can check your vehicle. You can apply for an exemption. You can apply for the taxi funding. Um, so there's a whole wealth of information on that website. So I would direct you to go there. Uh, we don't, for some reason on this slide, we also have a dedicated mailbox for the teams, which is cleanair at birmingham.gov.uk that myself and Gemma and the wider team monitor every single day. Um, so if you can't find the answer on the website, please drop us an email and we endeavour to get back to you as soon as possible. But I have finished now and we'll take any questions that have come up in the chat, I guess. Have any questions come up in the chat, um, Kay or Pat? Uh, sorry, I'm just I'm having a bit of trouble with my questions and answers at the moment in the Q&A box. Um, I can't see anything new just at the moment, mm. um, so I'm not sure whether you've There's got any questions. In the box at the moment, Councillor. 
Sorry, there are no questions. There's no questions. OK, well, I, I won't have my normal moan, um, Peter. And um, oh, Emma's gone. Gemma's gone. So I won't have my normal moan about the, the only ward that is completely covered by the clean air zone and the fact that I had to go and buy a new car um, because I was conscious I couldn't afford to pay eight pounds every day going in. And then I realised that I might actually have become a, in the exemption range. So I didn't have to change my car because I um, because I might have been in the in that exempt um, range. But nonetheless, so I'm hoping that those who are listening to this and will listen to it in the future um, will recognise that there will there are some exempt, exemptions. And in actual fact, I discovered a few days ago that there's a car which is solar panelled, solar powered in America, and it's sold out um, in it literally sold out before they even put it on. And that's 330 cars. So I believe within the next two years, we're not going to have this problem. We're going to have electric cars that are solar panel powered and we won't have to pay pay for any, any electricity. But anyway, thank you very much, Peter, for a very comprehensive presentation. Um, so thank you and thank Gemma as well. I'm I don't still think here. Any... Oh, Gemma's there. Yeah, she's I'm back. To... Oh, she's back. just turned her camera off. Yeah, All um, right, thank you very much. Uh, it's just a pleasure. Thank it's a pleasure you. to present and um, yeah we will be as you say uh, the, the communication around this is key so from january with six months to go there will be even more um communication going out so if you want us to come back in i don't know how often these ward meetings um uh, are how frequent they are but we can come back nearer the time um because it because everyone's focused on COVID at the moment, um, but with, with six months to go, people will start to, to be worried or, or want advice about the clean air zone. So, so we can absolutely come back and do this again. Yes, and if, if there isn't a change, because I know that politically, there is a, a lot of stuff going on around the clean air zone, not just in Birmingham, but, but all over where these clean air zones uh, are being um, put in place because of COVID and because of the economic impact on on the country, not just the country, but the world. So we have some significant problems in terms of employment and we know that the worst is yet to come. So let's see if if we actually do implement this policy that the government has imposed upon Birmingham. So it's not something that Birmingham wanted to do. And I know that my constituents listening there know that I fought vigorously for those who could not afford this charge and could not afford to change their cars. They know that and they know my views on this, but this is something that the government has imposed upon Birmingham. Thank you so very much. And I think there are no questions. Um, and the only thing I would say to constituents is stay safe, please. Um, we don't know about this virus, it's mutating. There are lots of vulnerable people out there, but stay safe. And if you have to go, to visit a relative, you know, as long as you, you comply with the rules, then that's probably the best thing. But if you don't have to go out Christmas, stay in your homes and stay alive rather than pass on something to a vulnerable person. Are there any other issues, Kay? Uh, the last item on the agenda, Councillor, was your updates. So I don't know if you've got any updates to give no, the no, meeting there are, on. There are no updates apart from I wish everyone and all and thank you, Kay. Thank you, Pat. Thank you again, Gemma and Peter. I wish you a wonderful festive break. Those of you who celebrate Christmas, a wonderful Christmas and have a happier new year. Thank you. And to you. Thank you. Bye. Thank, Thank you. Cheers. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Okay, can I say goodbye now?